if we're talking about seeing evolution today, uh, seeing one species changing into another species, uh, that's not going to happen. Although there must be, from an evolutionary perspective, many transitional forms out there, the likelihood of finding any one of them is extremely low. The more we learn about paleontology, that is fossils, the more certain we are that evolution is based on faith alone. The National Academy of Science is the official advisor to the U.S. government on questions of science. In its publications, it falsely claims that the missing links that troubled Darwin are no longer missing. This is misrepresentation which deceives millions because after 120 years of exhaustive searching, Darwin's missing links are still missing. Yet this academy and evolutionists continue to perpetuate the mythical theory that man developed from ape-like creatures. Richard Leakey, who is one of the most uh, well-known anthropologists, said that if he were asked to draw a family tree for man, he would just have to draw a huge question mark because the evidence is too scanty to possibly know man's evolutionary origin, and he didn't think we're ever going to find it. To aid and abet evolutionary concepts, artistic depictions have gone beyond ethical boundaries. Despite having no foundation for the ape-to-man theory, scientists and artists continue to dupe the public with lifelike but imaginary illustrations. These artists vainly entertain natural progressions of apes to humans and presume their hair color, skin tones, and even facial expressions from no more than a tooth, a piece of bone, or even no evidence at all. National Geographic magazine, which doesn't attempt to hide its evolutionary bias, admits that these fossilized footprints are identical to human footprints. Yet artists take the liberty to accommodate evolutionary theory and illustrate ape-like features to fit ape-like creatures. All because biased dating processes insist that these footprints were found in rock layers said to exist before humans. Now, today we have evolutionists who would like us to believe there is solid evidence for evolution. Before the public, they generally create the impression that the evidence is just like solid gold, that man has evolved from some ape-like creature. Dr. Donald Johansson, director of the Institute of Human Origins, discovered Lucy, an alleged ape-to-man missing link. The human family and the ape family diverged and went on their own individual and separate evolutionary trajectories. We don't know precisely the, the, what the common ancestor was for that, but we know that it resembles something like what is called Ramapithecus. Ramapithecus. That was formed out of nothing but a fragment of a jaw and several teeth. And for many, many years, Ramapithecus was held up as our ape-like ancestor. But now Dr. Pillbeam at the Yale Harvard Peabody Museum, when I interviewed him, he said, we have found about 40 of these creatures now, some of them fairly complete, and they are not on the direct line to becoming man at all. They're more like an orangutan. Dr. Pillbeam of Yale, who first claimed that Ramapithecus was an ancestor of man, now suggests that it isn't. Yet evolutionists continue to cite Ramapithecus as an ape-man link. Another so-called missing link, Java Man, was concocted by Eugene Dubois when he found an ape-like skull fragment and then 50 feet away, he found a human leg bone. However, just before he died, Dubois confessed that he also found two human skulls at this same location. And he admitted that the skull fragment belonged to a gibbon and not to an ape man. Homo erectus is probably best known as Java man. And it was at this stage in human evolution that they began to make and use these large triangular hand axes. Brains expanded over a thousand cc's. Uh, body proportions similar to ours evolved, and uh, we were firmly on the road uh, to later hominids, including modern humans. This hoax is still accepted by evolutionists today, and it's presented to the public as a true missing link. If you think the Java Man hoax is incredible, wait until you hear all the facts surrounding Johansson's Lucy, this little three and a half foot adult skeleton, which looks just like a chimpanzee. Uh, as you know, Lucy was found in 1974, and sometimes I refer to her as the woman who shook up man's family tree, because she represents for us 
the oldest, most complete skeleton we have of any human ancestor known to anthropologists. Now, the species Australopithecus alfarensis, as represented by Lucy, is a species that we feel is ancestral to modern humans. And the significance of Lucy is that she gives us a good idea of what our ancestors looked like some three million years ago. We can learn from her skeleton about the way that she walked, for example. When we look at her knee joint, when we look at her pelvis, we see that she walked like you and I instead of like a chimpanzee. Johansson said, even though this is a very ape-like creature, it walked upright. Well, the pygmy chimp today wanders around in the rainforest walking upright almost all the time, so that doesn't prove anything. Actually, the only features of Lucy which even hint at erect posture are the knee and, and hip joints. Dr. Charles Oxnard, with a sophisticated computer analysis, has concluded that Johansson's claims for the hip are unfounded, and it must be pointed out that the knee was not even found with Lucy. This knee joint was found over a mile away, 200 feet deeper than the other bones. She comes closer to representing, I think, what the average person thinks of as the missing link than any other fossil we had, had ever found in Africa. So she has extraordinary importance in terms of understanding the very earliest phases of human evolution. Richard Leakey and others are now claiming that in all likelihood Lucy is really a mosaic of, of two or more species. This isn't funny. What is funny is that they claim that creation isn't scientific. Uh, the next thing back was Piltdown Man. Here was a case where a human skull had been doctored up along with a jaw of an orangutan to make the jaw look somewhat human. The teeth were filed. It turned out to be a pure fraud. Piltdown Man was a purposeful fraud and it fooled the world's greatest evolutionists simply because they so much wanted to believe that there was some evidence for evolution. Neanderthal Man was originally found in the Neanderthal Valley of Germany. These creatures almost all look very modern, but several of them, two or three, had a very stooped over, brutish appearance. Now, however, two scientists have gone over to the museums in Europe from Johns Hopkins University, got these bones out of the museums and x-rayed the ones that had a very stooped over appearance. And lo and behold, they discovered that the stooped over creatures had rickets or some vitamin D deficiency disease such as arthritis. They have reclassified the Neanderthals from a separate species, now put them back into Homo sapiens, the same as modern man. Now Nebraska man consisted of nothing but a single tooth. And around this single tooth, pictures were drawn showing an ape-like creature that had evolved into man. It turned out later that this tooth was nothing but the tooth of an extinct pig. And this is a case now where uh, a pig made a monkey out of an evolutionist. I think man has always been man. The scientific evidence shows this, and this, of course, is very consistent with the account of creation that is presented in the book of Genesis behind closed doors or occasionally when speaking very candidly, the evolutionists admit there is really no evidence that man evolved from the apes.